Cablevision presents high school basketball from the Worcester Polytechnic Institute gym here in Worcester, Massachusetts. Division I boys state semifinals contest featuring the Golden Eagles of Central High School and the Colonials of Worcester South. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tyrone Sullivan along with Tom Forster bringing you this evening's action here from Worcester Polytech. Tom, the Colonials got here by way of beating Crosstown rival Holy Name, okay? Uh, they, they beat them 60-55 to reach tonight's semifinals. This is their first appearance in a tournament since losing to Cambridge Ranch in Latin. On the other side of the coin, Central High School is making their second appearance in three years here at Worcester Polytech. Let's hopefully we get to talk to, to some of the coaches later on during the contest and get right to the starting lineups for Central High School. Here we see the starting lineups for Central High School number 10, starting at guard this evening, Mike Anderson, replacing Perry At Atwood Perry, who injured his ankle earlier in the practice. Number 15, Eric Kazalka starting at center. The two forwards are Hidel Padilla and Atwood Perry, and Todd Robinson starting at guard. The starting lineups for Worcester South team, Scott Finner starting at guard, Jeffrey Creamer, the coach's son, at the other guard. The two forwards, Corey Clark and Sam Johnson, and the center, Kevin Hill. Yeah, they say coming into the game tonight, uh, Ty, that Sam Johnson, the forward, number 21, is their leading scorer, followed by the coach's son, uh, Jeff Cream, who's averaging around 10 points a game. And uh, they look for big games, big games out of both, both of these uh, these players. And uh, as you were talking to the coach during the game, one of the problems that they're going to see tonight is trying to combat the, the quickness of Central. We saw this. Okay, here's how Central got here, Ty. First of all, they defeated Pittsfield 74 to 58. Then they defeated Chickabee 67 to 61. And then finally, as you saw in the game that we did in the finals, Long Meadows uh, 65 to 56. Now looking over at the Worcester South, they defeated Westford 69 to 61, Burncoat 63 to 61. And one of the things you don't see, as you mentioned, they beat Holy Name 60 to 55 in a, in a comeback victory. And I guess we'll go out to the floor for the announcement of the starting lineup for the PA announcer. Here we get a good shot of Travis Best, number three, and number 15, the, the lone senior on the team, Eric Kazalka. At the other forward, number five, Hidel Padilla, a six foot two junior out of Puerto Rico. A surprise started is tonight at with Perry, number 20, coming off an ankle injury. He wasn't listed as a starter tonight. Mike Anderson was penciled in as the starter, and the running out the starting lineup, number 21, Todd Robinson. So Central does have their starting lineup intact this evening. Well, it looks like his ankle got a little bit better during the, uh, during the ride down here from Springfield. Of course, being a big game like this, these kids oftentimes rise to the occasion and overcome pain, and obviously he's done it tonight. Well, once that adrenaline starts to pump, who knows a lot of things happen. go away. Here comes the starting lineup for uh, Worcester South. There you see Corey Clark, number 20, will be at one forward. That's Kramer at the other guard. That's starting at one guard. That's one of the coaches. That is the coach's son, actually. This is Scott Fenner, number four. Fenner, probably the best point guard in Central Massachusetts, should have a really good matchup tonight between he and Travis Best. But I think we all know who will win that uh, standoff. This is uh, Kevin Hill, their center, 6'4". And here's their, their leading scorer, Kevin, uh, Sam Johnson, number 21. So I think we're in for, like you said, a battle of the point guards. But John? I think Fenner's more of a, uh, of, of a true point guard rather than a shooting guard like, like Travis is. Fenner is, uh, you know, likes to shoot, uh, get the ball off to Creamer, and Creamer's their primary scorer from the outside. Well, talking to Coach Creamer before the game tonight, he thought that all tournament long his squad has been the underdog, and he was just glad to be here, and anything that came after tonight was gravy. Uh, he felt that he was in a must situation. There was a lot of must he quoted to me tonight. He said he must offset central speed and quickness on defense. He must protect the ball and he must control the tempo, tempo of the game. He was looking more for a half-court game than, than a full-court up-and-down game. On the other side of the coin, of course, Central noted for their quickness and speed at both ends of the floor, offensively and defensively, uh, probably make that transition quicker than any team in the area. It'll be interesting also to see what type of defense they come out, realizing that uh, to stop Central, you've got to stop Travis Best. It'll be interesting to see what their, their defensive strategy is as they open up this game. Also, as you said, uh, Ty, they did come off a, a come-from-behind victory over Holy Name to get into it. So they have been the underdog, and I'm, I'm sure as we look out right now, they're picked as the underdog against our Central High Golden Eagles. 
as we're about set to get ready for action. Hidel Padilla for the Golden Eagles about to jump center along with number 21, Sam Johnson. Sam Johnson. And the ball is controlled by Central. Travis Best right to the top of the key. Little shake move, drops it off inside to Perry. And he almost loses the ball inside and he takes it up. And right away, number 20, Atwood Perry called for the reaching foul. Something that the, the Golden Eagles, the Central, can't really afford to do is to get in foul trouble very quickly here in the early going. The Central has, you know, is primarily a six-man team with Norman Domino coming off the bench very effectively. So as you say, they can't really afford to get in foul trouble early. Here we see probably the best point guard in Central Mass. Has the ball Beautiful. slapped away by Padilla, and he takes it up. It's and open now! A dunk break. The deep, the deep, the deep, the excellent. Just as you said, the, boy, the best point guard in Western Ma or Mass, Central Mass, Goodell does it, what he's done all year long and stripped him of the ball. Great defense. And that's what Central does best. They have a lot of slapping hands. Shot that time by Corey Clark. Rebound by Johnson. Good he in takes it up and in. Good inside move that time. Good strong rebound by Johnson. And that time, number 14. Primer misses the easy bunny layup. Good pass. Inside to Padilla. He takes up and nice in. Good power move that time by Padilla. He was followed by Kevin Hill. That was an excellent inside move and strong baseline move by Goodell Padilla. That was all started by, by uh, Travis Best. He got that ball up quickly. He had him on the wing, and Goodell took it to the hoop. I think Central was just caught off guard just a little bit when, when the Colonials came out in the full court press, and they got a quick turnover. But unfortunately, number 14, Jeff Krimmer, the coach's son, couldn't convert to, to steal. And, and Central came away, again, talking about that quick transition game down the floor. Uh, there was a push out there by number 12. Kevin Hill, but they didn't call. It's going to be a jump ball. Right away, the crowd is into the ball game. A good contingent of Springfield fans here this evening at Worcester Polytech. Ball into Travis Best. Working on Scott Finner. Best takes it up. No good. Rebound by Padilla. He takes it up, and he draws the foul. Padilla will go to the line to shoot two. I'll tell you, Ty, Del Padilla is picking up right like he did out against Longmeadow, where he really controlled inside against Longmeadow, and uh, Del Padilla is really playing aggressive. Same style we saw him against Longmeadow. That time, the Colonial foul was on number 20, Corey Clark. That's his first, team second. As you get a good look at the six foot two junior from Puerto Rico, shooting at about 63% from the free throw line, averaging approximately 19 points a game, Del Padilla. I tell you, the Springfield fans got into this game very quickly as Padilla hits the front of the rim with that foul shot. Scott Finner again controlling. Springfield looking to trap and double team. Corey Clark working on best. Springfield playing that 1-3-1 one, one zone that they're noted for. Good spin move by Sam Johnson. Finner from outside, no good. Rebound by Krimmer. He, he kicks oh, it out and steal, like and it's still by Eric Kozalka. Kozalka on the floor, battling, and he's called for travel. Oh. Boy, it looked like a foul. That was a homer call, Ty. It looked like there was a, definitely a foul against Greg Kozalka. They didn't call. They were all over him. Referee Jerry Hippert called out of travel. Like you said, Kozalka had two men all over him, but he did kind of roll on the floor just a bit. Padilla, as usual, doing a great job out in the front of that 3-2. Ball almost blocked that time by Best. Fighting inside ball, finally controlled by Sam Johnson for, for the Colonials of Worcester South. He and he traveled. Just a bit of intimidation that time on the part of the Golden Eagles. That quick defense, just like Coach Kramer said, he was going to, they had to offset the quickness of Central, and that time it definitely showed up. Central with a three-point lead here at 5-2 to two with six minutes remaining in the first period. Oh, what Best takes it up, drops it off inside, and has it slapped away. Finner pushes the ball down the floor. He lays it up and in. That time, Travis Best was over the rim. I mean, that was an incredible athletic move by Travis Best. Best pushing the ball down the floor to Padilla. Padilla, wide open, lays it up in good. Oh, play. Padilla noted for being a sleeper, hanging back, playing that lazy defense, like to slap the ball from behind, and then take off and down the floor and gets that easy bunny layup. Yeah, excellent job. Padilla does that all year long, and I'm surprised they don't have somebody back helping out on him. I mean, if all they do is scout, you see that that's Padilla's trademark. There Ritter he goes again. It up. Rebound by Perry. Travis Best wasting no time getting the ball across the half-court line. At the top of the key, fakes Finner out, takes it up, and good! Move. That time it was like Finner had his foot nailed to the ground, and he just a little duke to the right and went right up the middle. 
Drenner comes back strong with a little layup of his own. He challenges Eric Pazolka. Oh, Travis got nailed on that one. Yeah, I think he kind of twisted his ankle. Todd Robinson takes it up in the head. Travis is limping. Let's hope that Travis is going to be all right. He was, uh, he tried to move, and they stood right in front of him, but he tried to go up court with it. Well, the best kept secret all day today at Central High School, and there's a steal by Robinson. He lays it up and takes it oh. down. Beautiful. No, no charge on that either. Coach Kerr going to need a timeout here with 4.35 remaining in the first period. He can't let this go on too much longer. Uh, and Padilla call, call. called for a lazy man foul that time. No, really just reaching around, not moving his feet on defense. Yeah. And like you said, a lazy man foul. And I'm surprised the coach hasn't called a timeout. He's got to settle these troops down. I think they're a little intimidated right now. Yeah, he's calling a timeout right now. I tell you, that, that, that sense of high quickness and that team, overall team speed has, has definitely paid off for Central. And we do get that timeout from Coach Trimmer from Woods to South. Hopefully sometime during the course of the evening we'll be able to get into either the Worcester huddle or into the Central huddle. Well, I think, Ty, uh, looking at the, the uh, first period of action, just like the coach was afraid that the, uh, the Central quickness was going to be an intimidating factor, we've seen that to be the case, and I think that they're, they're very worried about Travis Best, and I think they're going to be double teaming on Travis. He's going to be able to dump off to uh, Fidel Padilla and Atwood Perry and his other, uh, and Greg, uh, Eric Asalka. We haven't seen Eric uh, yet go to the boards, but I think he's going to get to the board soon, and they're going to have a problem. Because once they start dropping off, they're going to really have a problem. And we have yet to see probably the best six man in the area in Norman Domino. Yeah. Domino adds a whole another dimension to the central lineup. Of another jumper, another speed guy, so to speak. That's the thing. They don't miss a beat when they put Norman Domino in there. As I told you against uh, Lawn Meadow, I was very impressed by Norman Domino. Probably, as you said, one of the best six men in uh, Western Massachusetts. That's an unrefutable fact, I'd say. As we can see, that central 1-3-1 one, one that they've noted for, along with playing a 3-2 zone, they like to challenge the ball. They like to pressure the ball the whole game. Kind of reminds me of, like a, of a Georgetown team. Really? They'll apply the pressure at both ends of the floor. And now the time was Kramer with a shot that was no good. Best pushing the ball up the floor to Todd Robinson. Good steal out there. Rob Perry There's has the ball slip, strapped it. There's that hustle, Atwood Perry. Great, great move by Atwood Perry. Three-point shot by Best, no good. Rebound that time by number 20, Corey Clark for Worcester South. Stolen, nice steal by Atwood Perry. Good pass by Perry. Oh, nice pass down. inside to Hidel Padilla. Showtime. Excellent move. There's that deep. At this point, Worcester South is totally intimidated, I think, Ty. They're, they, I, they, I don't think they've seen this type of quickness on a team. And team speed, it's not like you have one guy who's quicker or another. The entire central team is quick. And they all move well with the ball, as we saw that time. At Central Press, they might not come away with a steal, but they will cause that bad pass. And somebody will flick at that ball and get a fingernail on it. See, another thing you're seeing here is that 3-2 that sags in the middle. And the only way you're going to beat it is through those jump shots from the outside the top of the key. Sam Johnson that time with a jump shot. Kozoka has to be careful that he's standing under the basket when he takes that ball out of bounds. Pass down to the wing to Vidia, and he's called for a travel. That happened to him a couple of times in a long medal game. He was called for traveling. Yeah. Goodell's so intense in that, you know, as a ball player, he just sometimes takes off and forgets to dribble it. Good. That's almost stolen that time by Robinson. Central has to hustle back. Brenner drops it off his side. Ball's batted away by Kozolka. Long pass down the floor. Atwood Perry tries to run it down, and he does. To go to the hoop. Central takes his time, brings the ball out, takes it up. Best lays it oh, up and That time you can see that defensive pressure. Travis waited to see what he was going to do. He didn't commit, so Travis just went right to the hoop. 2 Excellent on 1 Worcester South against Kozalka. Nice layup that time by Sam Johnson. You got to see what kind of springs the high jumper has. Nice speed off that time by Scott Venner. Oh. Best tried to fake the shot and had the ball knocked out of bounds. I believe that time it was by Kevin Hill. Worcester South is complaining, but that clearly was off hill. I'll tell you, if anything, the Central crowd is into the ball game this evening. Much more so than the Worcester South team. Oh. Inside to Padilla. <laughs> There's Matt <Matt> Hagan. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, Padilla gets behind the defense, lulls them to sleep, and he just finds that open spot. Finner's going to challenge Kozolka. No good. Good rebound oh. by Kozolka. And Central pushes it right back at Worcester South. There's Padilla right on the wing. Press. See if they're going to call a charge. They're going to call a charge on uh, Travis Best. No question. 
I don't know about that one. <laughs> that was a great move. The one thing about it, though, Travis had Goodell Perry open, and, I mean, Goodell Padilla open on the, on the wing, and I think what Travis was trying to do is he trying to get the pressure off, get the defensive low flow going towards Goodell, and he just went up himself. And like you said, a questionable charge. Even if he let the ball go first and then made the charge, the basket would have been scored. I think... I thought for a minute the referee was going to question that, but they're just wiping up the question. As you get to see the score with a break in the action here at Central 19, with the South 10 with 2.14 remaining here in the first period. At this rate, we're on about an 80 clip if Central keeps at this pace. Absolutely. Oh, Here's that nice. slapping defense again. That's going to be off. Oh, boy, that looks to oh. me like it was off Sam Johnson. Johnson got away with one that time for sure. Todd Robinson hit it into his body. It looked to me from here that like that went off. Sam Johnson's body. But again, Ty, great slapping defense by Todd Robinson. Brenner takes it into the teeth of the central defense and has trouble controlling. Rebound by Padilla. Oh. And a ball passed by Padilla behind Travis Betts that time. Yeah, that time what he, he tried to lead Tra Travis, but unfortunately one of the Worcester South players had gotten in the line of the, uh, of the pass and he was forced to try to go to his back. Travis just overran it. Well, we certainly have a good deal of cheerleaders right on top of this here, Ty. <laughs> As the crowd, one thing about the crowd here at Worcester Polytech is that they are right in the game, right here on the floor. Little scoop shot that time by number 12, Kevin Hill. Whoa, they have they're a gonna ball situation, and the arrow is in favor of Worcester South. That was an interesting, an interesting shot because he, his, his initial shot was blocked, or he was impeded, and he went to go back up, and Travis was right there in his face, and they called the jump ball. You know, another thing that surprises a lot of opponents about Travis Best is that he has such great leaping ability. He's, if he was an inside man, he'd be the best rebounder, there's no question. Worcester, Worcester being very patient here. Passing the ball around the perimeter of the central defense. Again, there's that quick hands, those quick feet by central players. And they move so well as a unit. It's almost like one cohesive unit just it, it reacting to anywhere that ball goes. Looking to trap now out of that 1-3-1. Shot taken up that time by number 20, Corey, Corey Clark. Clark. Best pushing the ball back down the floor. Three on two situation. Best all the way Whoa. up and in. Jeez. That time, they, the two forwards, they, they respected Padilla and the other, and that would carry out in his wing. And you can just sense Travis saw these guys are, are, are dropping off. And Travis is right up the middle of the excellent play by Travis Best. That time, Eric Kozolko called for the foul on the drive by number four, Scott Finner. Finner will go to the line to shoot two. You can see that the best six man at Western Mass, Norman Domino, coming into the game. And he's going to replace Atwood Perry. I don't know about you, but I can hardly hear myself speak this evening with the crowd right behind us. I mean, they are, like, like I said, they are literally right on top of us. The cheerleaders are like a hand away. Whew. Finner rattles the first foul shot home. Around the rim in 80 days. That's a deafening roar in back of this guy. Well, the Worcester fans are kind of sitting on, the, on their hands right now. And with that foul shot, that makes it Central 21. Worcester South 14 with just a minute left to go in the first period. Let's watch for Norman Domino flashing through the lane. Oh, he was wide there open he there. He is right there. He takes nice it up pass. and he lays it in. Excellent pass by Del Padilla. And like you said, they, Norman Domino just cut into that lane and a nice look that time by Del Padilla. Looks like they're going to get Mike Anderson into the game now. Mike Anderson into the Golden Eagle lineup replacing Todd Robinson. It's interesting. Todd's not limping at all, so he's not showing any signs of that bad ankle tie. I don't notice Coach Burns not wasting any time going to his bench with about 52 seconds trying to get those starters out so they don't pick up that cheapy foul. Turner looking to put the three-point up. Takes it back out to number 14, Kremer. Kremer, no shot, no good. Rebound by Domino. No defensive rebound or offensive rebound at that time for uh, Mr. South. There was nobody in the, in the uh, paint. Fans looking for the foul. Inside to Kosoka, he oh, lays it nice up and pass. nice little small alley-oop, not a major league alley-oop, but, but it works. I'll tell you, Padilla's passing tonight is outstanding. Rebound that time 
by Norman Domino after two two shots by Worcester South. No good. Best takes it the up. Best man. Oh, they're calling a walk. I don't know about that call. Unfortunately, we don't have a wrist and replay tonight because I would definitely like to see that one again, Ty. That didn't look like a walk to me. Travis is just so is so fluid that I think that they, they couldn't anticipate that anybody could have that much momentum and not carry it. One thing that impresses me more than anything is the, is the amount of nice distance steal. he can cover. Padilla gets the steal and takes up and misses. And Norman Domino came away. And that's the end of the first period. That makes it Central 23. Which the South Colonials 14. Like you were saying, Tom, that quickness from Central, that defensive pressure rattled Worcester South. Oh, there's no question about it. And like you know, like you were about to say before they uh Gidel Padilla made that steal, Travis Best carry he covers so much ground in his initial move that oftentimes it looks like he's traveling because he's so fluid. And he, and I don't think the referees anticipate that anybody can cover that much ground. I've seen Travis go from half court to the basket in two dribbles. Oh, he, I can do that. He, he did that in long metal games. Right. Yeah, but he didn't walk when he did it, though. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's I, I tell you, the noise here tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is just unbelievable. A good contingent of Springfield fans here this evening making the trip all the way from Springfield to Worcester Polytechnical Institute. Here we get to get, see a good shot of the fans from Central. And look at that. I like the way they have their faces painted. I mean, it's... Uh, that's high school spirit right there. That, that's what high school athletics, that's what high school team's all about. It's nice to see so many people made the trip down here. We're just hearing from um, the Central bench that uh, Worcester South was 5 for 21 from the floor and uh, Central was 11 for 15, so they obviously have the edge in shooting. As we get set to start the second period with the score 23 Central, 14 Worcester South. Travis Best at the top of the key. He takes it up left-handed, no good. Rebound now by Corey Clark. I think one of the reasons for the high percentage of uh, central shots, Ty, was because they had so many layups because of their good passing and aggressive defense. Whereas Worcester South has been forced to try to go with jump shots to try to beat the press. Inside to Sam Johnson, he lays it up with a little jump hook. Ball quickly up the floor to Padilla. Looking inside underneath to Norman Domino, That's and Padilla had the ball slapped away from him by number 21, Sam Johnson. Uh, Johnson. Oh, sorry, came that around. was Corey Clark that time. Excuse me. That's his his third, I believe. That's going to hurt Coach Kremer's Colonials for sure. Corey Clark picking up a quick third here early in the second period. Yeah, just as uh, Central is primarily a seven-team uh, man team, uh, Worcester South is very similar. They they only go with six or seven players. And Norman Domino hits from the elbow. Nice shot by Domino. Like you said, he could do it all. Rebound and hit from the outside. That ball was tipped by Travis Best on the way up. Oh, look at Good that. Oh. by Best. He takes the whole team down to the hole. <laughs> really? Rebound that time by number 12, Kevin Hill. And it's tipped by a central player, and it goes out of bounds. Excellent Colonial's play. ball. Excellent play by Norman Domino. I don't think Worcester South was anticipating this type of aggressive defense off the full court. And see, one of the things that's so nice about him, Ty, is they can press down deep, but also they're so quick they can get back and set up. Todd Robinson now returning to the central lineup, replacing Mike Anderson as Corey Clark takes some shot. A three-pointer. Downtown. That makes it 25 central, 19 the Colonials of Worcester South. Best working on Finner. Drops it off inside to Padilla. He had the ball almost slapped oh. away. Nice play by Kozolka, but it didn't go out of bounds. It was saved by Worcester South. Printer working on best. Printer takes it up. I think it's called Padilla. Basket interference on, yeah. on Padilla that time. Yeah, I think, I think they called out an Eric Kozolka. That puts Colon the, the Colonials of Worcester South right back into the ball game at 25-21. Only down by four. And they're letting, not only are they letting the, the uh, team back in, they're also letting the fans back in. The, the fans have been rather docile there for a few minutes. Best change the shot. Oh. He rattles it home. Unbelievable. That time Travis was able to change direction in midair. His, his hind time is what made him be able to get that shot off. Absolutely. Central has to hustle back. Corey Clark takes it up. No good. Rebound by Kozolka. Good strong board that time by Kozolka. Right. That's what I meant. That time... Uh, Worcester South have gotten down almost on a three-on-one, and then all of a sudden you saw that swarming defense was able to get back quickly and set up. 
Medea drops it off his side to Best. Oh! Great nice layoff. Great right. look. Medea to Best. Find the open man. And he got an easy layup. That makes it 29 21 Central with 540 remaining here in the half. Goodell, Padilla's passing tonight is outstanding, as I mentioned before. Okay. And what a great look by Travis. And he just hangs up in midair and decides what to do. Great body movement. Inside of Sam Johnson. That's going to be an Eric Osaka. How many is that an Eric? I think that should be about two on, on, on Osaka. That's about the fifth on the team. Yeah, they're in the uh, bonus situation now. Sam Johnson will go to the line to shoot two. Like Coach, Coach Burns literally going to his bench early here in the first half. As you see, Kevin Burt now coming into the central lineup, replacing Eric Kozoka. Kevin Burt, Norman Domino, and even Mike Anderson, the guard, all got quality time against the long medal in the Western Mass Finals. And Coach Burns not afraid to use those people here tonight. And as we see, Kevin Burke with the rebound. Yeah, Travis Best got in foul trouble in the uh, third period, and uh, the other players did a nice job filling in for him. Padilla tries to lay it off to Robinson, and the ball was stripped away by Frimmer. So, so again, hustling back on defense. Very aggressive defense. Oh, uh, he walked with it with some traveling music. Corey Clark called for the travel, something that Coach Frimmer didn't need. That time he went to go to his left, and uh, Goodell Padilla was standing right there, and it messed him up, and he had nothing to do but find himself flat-footed, and he had to travel. It's one thing to turn the ball over when you have your pass intercepted, but it's another thing to turn it over on a traveler. Unforced error. Yep. As Best has a stripped away recovered by Domino. Oh, no, <laughs> Domino, Domino <laughs> high off the glass. Woo! He got up there big time. That time they did a nice job stripping the ball, but as usual, these players fill in for each other so well. It's almost like a sixth sense. Just as, as quick as they were down by... Four, they're now trailed by 10 as we watch the Colonials work the ball around the perimeter of central defense. This was very similar to the Chickabee game tie, where you know they would come back, they get a few three pointers, and then tie, uh, Travis would just take control. Corey Clark scores off the offensive rebound, off the missed shot that time by Trimmer. Travis Best looking for Padilla. Look how every time he tries to make a move, they sag to try to double team him. You see both of them on there right now. Best with a two-point shot. <laughs> Downtown, Travis Best. <laughs> Hold the phone, we have a winner. And yeah, that time, everyone went, when he went right, they are going to call it No, they called a travel. Good defense that time by Kevin Burke. Kevin Burke held his ground beautifully. Great move by Kevin Burke that time, Ty. As I was saying, every time Travis would make a move to the right or the left, they would double-team his, his movement. And so Travis has said, hey, fine, I'm just going to throw it up right here from downtown. That's something that Travis has, has really worked on, making that move at the top of the circle as we see another three-point shot. We're seeing best at his best. <laughs> Travis says, come out and get me. Nice one well, by Kevin like... Burke. <laughs> as Wadea takes it up and nice has the shot blocked by number 12 that time, Kevin Hill and mm -hmm. Coach Jerry Durham from Worcester South. It's going to have to call another timeout here oh, with the team it. down by 14 points with 3.54 remaining. And then there it is, that timeout. Well, against uh, against Chickadee, they asked you to, you know, what? how would you summarize it? It's very easy. Travis Best. I mean, every time Central seems to be down a little bit, Travis picks up the pace, gets his team back into the game, and they all respond to him. And it's just incredible the way this team feeds off each other. Uh, it's infectious. It goes from offense to defense. They do something well on offense, then, then it carries right over to, to, to their offense and their defense, and it's, like I said, it's very, very infectious. It really is. I mean, I feel like I'm out in the court, don't you, Ty? Hey, well, we're right on top of the court <laughs> with the fans right behind us this evening. Yeah, this is, this is great for high school basketball. We're seeing it at its best. All right, and here we get a shot of the Worcester crowd, very, very subdued right now as, like as we see the cheerleaders. Ty? Those cheerleaders aren't cheering, Ty. Why do you think that's the case? Go to the score at 37 23 with 354 remaining here in the first half. No quality minutes from Kevin Burke, quality minutes from Norman Domino, quality minutes from Mike Anderson. Three reserves off the bench for Coach Byrne. And like I said, he's, he's getting them in early, and I think that's important. And I think that means a lot to these kids, too, to know that you know the coach isn't afraid to go to the bench and use them. That's a, that's a, a credit to Coach Burns as well. Here we see Hadel Padilla about to go to the foul line shooting. 69%. Coach Burns felt that one of the key factors on this side of the ledger this evening was that they had to shoot well from the foul line. They had to hit the front end of the one and one. And isn't it nice to see Goodell do that? And he has, he makes two. 
because we saw him the last couple of games wasn't doing it, so that was, I'm sure that makes Coach Howie Burns feel good. That time, Todd Robinson called for the foul. Yeah, That's Todd's in. first. A uh, little lazy on defense. Really had, could have cut the, the ball player off on the sideline, but he chose to reach it and got him with the leg, got him with the knee. And that'll send number 21, Sam Johnson, to the line to shoot one and one. Yeah, with three minutes and 50 seconds to go here, holding a commanding 16-point lead. It's, uh, also, it's nice to see the Continental Cable Division travel down here tonight to bring you the game. Uh, credit to them, and uh, I hope all the people back in Springfield appreciate Continental Cable Division covering this game for them. But I'll tell you, it looks like half of uh, Springfield's here with us tonight, Pat. Well, they have just about the whole side filled up here this evening. As we get to see a good shot at number 21, Sam Johnson. Johnson, an excellent athlete in his own right. Ball tracked down and knocked out of bounds by Central. It'll be Worcester South ball. <laughs> I think Worcester South thinks they're in a, uh, a treadmill here. You know, we're talking about Sam Johnson, number 21. He owns the championship of New England in the high jump in track and field at six foot eight, and he's only six foot two. Wow. Good pass inside that time to number 12, Kevin, Kevin Hill. Hill. That was a nice pass inside by Worcester South. That time Hill made a nice job and he went, went unmolested. Todd Robinson back to best. Uh, they're going to call a walk on Boy, I don't know. That's, a, that's questionable. Again, I don't think they anticipate that anybody can move that fast. Really, and cover that much territory. Really. I mean, he took a step and he was about to be gone. You think that's the case? I mean, you think these referees, when you've got an athlete of uh, Travis' best quality, I mean, they don't anticipate someone could do the things that he does? Well, sometimes these referees aren't used to seeing a player of that caliber. Yeah. As Frenner drives the baseline, he gets the ball back, takes it up, has the ball stripped away. Oh, nice play by Kevin. This, the official out here says the ball was stripped away. The yeah. official underneath said he got, oh, it, I don't know. got it hit. The referee, yeah, the first referee out to the closest to us, I guess that's Jerry Hippert. He had said that he had hit it, that he had, uh, was a good block. Kevin Burke that time called for the foul. Now back into the lineup, two of the central starters, number 15, Eric Kozorka, number 20, Atwood Perry, replacing Kevin Burke and Todd Robinson. That'll send Scott Finner to the line to shoot two. Boy, it, it's nice that you can get those starters, that rest. You know, Eric Kozorka now back in the game with only 3.08 to go, so... That's really got to help, especially with this aggressive defense. You know, they need all the, the rest they can get. Ball Good controlled reason. by Best. And he pushes the ball right back at Worcester South. Into Padilla. Padilla oh, nice offense. Kozalka, he lays it up. And good. What a nice look. Again, Goodell Padilla continues with his excellent pass and an excellent look. Unselfish play by the Golden Eagles of Central High School. And in particular, Goodell Padilla. What a nice look. Nice play by Eric Kozalka. Again, there's that sixth sense. They know where they are, Ty. Rebound by Best, and he pushes the ball right back at Worcester South. Watch it move. Good look away, pass it to Padilla, and a foul, and we'll go to the line to shoot one. There's that peripheral vision that Travis Best is best at. Unbelievable. And you can see the way they spread out tonight when they were coming down, and, and Travis knew where, exactly where all four men were. You know, we've said this time and time again, because the central ball players are so very unselfish, they're willing to run the floor for each other to fill the lanes on the wing and they know that they're going to get the ball back as we see the foul shot that was made. Hey, Goodell Padilla's hitting on the line tonight, Ty. Look at that defense. Central has to run back. Ball taken up that time by number 21, Sam Johnson. He does a good job taking the ball into the paint. But Central wastes no time getting the ball right back. Ball's off to Kosaka, who's way out. Best with a three-point shot. Oh. No good. Rebound by Domino. Oh, Norman Domino. Whoa. What a great rebound by Domino. That was definitely the Domino effect. That was a travel there. Good oh, move that, by Johnson again. He took that ball under his hip like he was going for a first down. It looked like a travel to me. Best takes it inside. Good what pass. pass. To Domino. Oh, and he blew it. And best call for the charge after the pass. What a nice look, though, to Norman Domino. Nice pass that time inside, but Best again called for the offensive charge. Now how many is that on Travis at this point? That's two on Best. Okay, a minute and 50 seconds to go, holding a 15-point lead, so I think uh, 
Coach Burns is going to want to slow it down a little bit here to take that lead in the locker room. But Coach Burns does everything full tilt. I'm well, really impressed by that. I don't know so much if he's going to want to slow it down. He, he's going to let them do what they do best, I think. And as long as they, it's still early in the ball game here, we're only in, at the end of the first half with 140 remaining. He's going to try to get as many points as he can here. I mean, how, how are you going to keep them down on the farm after they've seen this lead, right? <laughs> Worcester being a very patient three-pointer that time oh, by Corey Clark, no good. And that was in the in the. Padilla takes it in, he takes it up, and he throws up an air ball. Trinner comes down the Look floor. Look at Norman catching. Look at Norman catching. That's about, that's about the easiest basket that Worcester South has had all evening. That player was at half court, and Norman Domino's at the foul line, and he almost caught him. Unbelievable. Ball turned over by Padilla. A host of players back on defense, and Johnson takes up, and the ball is rebound by Norman Domino. They he wastes no over. time getting the outlet pass to Best, who pushes the ball up. Oh, what a pass to Erica Salta. Oh, come on, ref. you got to be kidding me. They're caught up. They're caught. It. That time, oh. Travis Best called for another oh, player man. control with an elbow. It's unfortunate we don't have the instant replay tonight, because, boy, I'd like to see that one again. That's Travis's third foul with 51 seconds remaining here in the first half. Did you see the end of that play, Ty, when he had, I mean, Eric Asalka, I mean, he just had an unbelievable wide open pass to Eric Asalka. Eric Asalka didn't even know where the ball came from. It was right in his hands underneath the basket. Wow. Again, Kevin Burke back into the ball game along with Todd Robinson. Three-point attempt that time by number 14, Jeff Kremer. And Kremer banks it home. That makes it 46-36 the Golden Eagles of Central High School with 30 seconds remaining in the first half. Central will be very patient here as Todd Robinson had the ball slapped away by Corey Clark that time. 26 seconds remaining on the clock. Central should hold the ball out for one shot here. Yeah, I think that's what they should be doing. But like you said, it's, these kids are so aggressive. They just want to go all the time, full tilt. Let's we'll see if they work it around. Ball inbounds to Norman Domino. He takes it up. No good rebound by Atwood Perry. He powers the ball up and... I believe Krimmer that time, yeah, Jeff Krimmer, Krimmer called for, I believe, his first personal foul. Makes that his second personal foul. Excuse me. Okay, so they got a 10-point lead with 22 seconds. See if Atwood can uh, increase his lead. At the locker room. Atwood Perry going to the line, a 75% free throw shooter, one of the best on the Golden Eagles team. Perry taking a lot of time at the line. Nice soft shot, good follow through, good, good hand move. For all you young kids watching, you'll notice that Atwood did. That ball was complete extension right through, right to the hoop. Coach Howie Burns sends in Corey White replacing Eric Kozalka. So Kozalka will not pick up any unnecessary fouls with 22 seconds remaining. Another good shot by Atwood Perry. I tell you, Perry very patient on the foul line. Uses that full 10 seconds. Absolutely. Johnson pushing the ball down the floor. He takes it up. Throws it down. No good. Rebound by Todd Robinson. That time they had three central players around that ball. Not one offensive rebounder was in that paint. For Todd Robinson ball. takes it up. No good. Tipped by Kevin Burke. Nice play by Kevin Burke. That time Kevin Burke got great position. And Long ball. shot. Ooh, down no ball. good. Almost took out the cameraman for continental pay position. And here at the Worcester Polytech Gymnasium at the end of the first half, it's the Golden Eagles of Central High School 50 and the Colonials of Worcester South 36. Tom, in your estimation, why are the Eagles up by 14 points? Well, first of all, two words, Travis Best. Second thing is defense. Uh, strong, aggressive defense. And I'm also very impressed by Goodell Padilla. Goodell Padilla is having a great game as far as his looking. He's uh, passing off nicely. And again, Central is a team. They're not, you know, one player or another. They're all, they work as a team. They work cohesively, and they're just taking it to Worcester South at this point. Central coming in, doing the things that we really expected them to do. The center for Central, seven rebounds in the first half alone. Travis Best, the point guard, had six. And coming off the bench, Norman Domino, the best man that we figure in, in, in Central Mass and Western Mass, the sixth man with four rebounds and a couple of points. Yeah, I think uh, another key, as I was talking to the coach during halftime, another key to that first half was Kevin Burke did a nice job coming off the bench, uh, did a nice job filling in for Erica Salkin, and also we saw uh, Mike Anderson did a nice job, as well as uh, 
Corey White. So he got a lot of people in the, in the, in the uh, game in the first uh, half of action. Coach Burns went at least four deep in his bench, getting quality time from his bench in the first half. We'll see Norman Domino starting the second half. Central back to that famous 1-3-1 one, one zone. Shot outside that time by number four, Finner. Rebound by Atwood Perry. And Central's right back at Worcester South. Best from three-point land. And he is downtown. He said the finner here. I'll go down the other end of the court and show you how it's done. We'll pick right up where we left off. Absolutely. You know, strangely, it's slapped oh, by what Padilla a play. from behind. He has the ball slapped away by Corey Clark. What a great move by Goodell Padilla. Again, he's picking up that same enthusiasm he showed against Longmeadow. Corey Clark that time, lucky that he didn't pick up his fourth personal foul. Really. One of the things that we saw Chickaby Comp try to do against Central was to go to that three-point shot, and that's why they were able to you know, come back in the second half after they had, uh, Central had gone out to a big lead against them. Best had trouble inbounding that ball that time, and he uses a Central timeout. Some confusion on the inbounds play from Central that time. But again, even with that confusion, they're still holding to a 17-point uh, lead here with seven minutes and 32 seconds to go, so that was a smart move by Travis. Rather than waste that, he called the timeout. Oh, look at this move by the uh, Central Golden Eagle cheerleaders. I don't think the cheerleaders get as, as much credit as they do, Ty. I mean, these, these are very good athletes. Uh, you know, they, a lot of people think all they do is go out and sing and cheer, but they really have some good moves. These young ladies put in a lot of time at practice, three, four days a week, a couple hours at a shot, and it shows off. Really, very, very well choreographed. See them on Broadway someday. I tell you, the fans are picking up right where they left off in the first half also. You know, it's interesting, when you look around the field, it seems we've, the whole central side is into the game, whereas the central for uh, Worcester South, they're primarily on one end of the court. You can see some of the fans for Worcester South are mimicking the cheerleaders. Ball inbounded to Best. He takes it over to Kozalka, back to Best. Working on Finner, uses a good pick by Kozalka. He best what a move. Up and lays it in. What a nice, that was that was set up by a nice pick by Eric Kozalka, and Travis did a nice job just moving right off and going to the hoop. Central now moving the press back to three-quarter court. Still extending that 1-3-1. One, one. And Finner has the ball slapped away by Atwood Perry. All the way up to Padilla. And Padilla lays it up. And in. Oh, it's charge. Whoa, I don't know about that. Padilla is hurt. He is in pain. He came down on his elbow. Slapped down on his elbow. Fidel Padilla is hurt, Ty. He came down flat right on that elbow. Padilla laying down on the floor. He has heard that. Coach Howie Burns not agreeing at all with referee Jerry Hippert about the offensive call. There you see Goodell Padilla. He is in pain. But of course, there's that, there, you have that funny bone right there, and that's a jarring injury. It's almost like a, like you're electrocuted. I think that's the only call Hippert knows all evening is offensive call. All of the calls that have been called offensive have been called by Hippert this evening. Yeah, that was, uh, I don't agree with that call at all. He was definitely moving when, when uh, Goodell Padilla went to that hoop. And the only way it would be an offensive would, would would be an offensive foul that man had a stationary position, and I think he was clearly moving. Yeah, but once a player takes off, he must be allowed room to come down, and, and he was. was not allowed room to come down. Again, we apologize for the no, replay tonight, but uh, believe me, if we saw that again, yeah, I think you would see clearly that Goodell Padilla was was not, was not an offensive foul. Let's hope Goodell. Okay, Todd Robinson. Todd Robinson will now enter the ball game, replacing Padilla. I'm sure Padilla will be right back in the starting lineup. Yeah, that's just like I said, it's almost like you're like an electrical shock when you hit like that, right? Because they hit right on the funny bone. I think once the uh, initial shock goes away, we'll see Gonzalo Padilla back. Central now extending that 1 3 1 to half court. Norman Domino out front with those long arms and that jumping ability. Corey Clark takes it up, rebound by Atwood Perry, finally control by Kozoka, who makes a half-hearted pass out to Todd Robinson. Again, you see the reason for that sure shooting percentage. Be Travis Best takes it in and draws the foul from Scott Finner. As I was saying, uh, Ty, you can see that last time down the court, they're really taking shots they don't want to take, almost to, in an effort to try to beat that 3-2 press, but they can't do it. And that's the reason for the first half having a 38% um, on the floor. Travis Best going to the line. The first one's a little short off the front of the rim. Best shooting 72% from the free throw line. Again, you saw that time he didn't extend his hand straight through. He sort of 
cut it off halfway through. That time he did. Best has already scored as a sophomore 658 points in 23 games, 22 games. Incredible. Now that time, we saw him do that same move before, Ty. You were looking away for a minute, but he takes the ball down by his side. We call it travel on Travis. That was... I don't know what's going on. I don't know what game this referee is watching here. <laughs> it's evening. a different game. Because number 21 for them took the ball by his side. He walked with it. And they didn't call it. Yet Travis came out on the court and they called double dribble. I don't know where he's coming from. And again, they're just not used to a, pe a person of Travis' best quality. I mean, he's just so quick. Central again with that extended 1-3-1 one, one zone. And Worcester South has the ball turned over. They're just throwing it away. They're, they're, they're intimidated by this zone. There's no, there's no question about it. Todd Robinson takes it up from outside for two. That's the way to beat that play. The outside shooting of Central, along with the inside play this evening, has worked wonders for the Golden Eagles of Central High School. And a great pass, a great look. Ball almost turned over again by Worcester South. Inside to number 12. Uh, Travis almost touched that ball. He laid off it just really? a little bit. That shot that time. What like a pass to Norman. Norman Domino. Domino, nice oh. lead pass. Eric Kosonka with a great lead pass to Norman Domino. That looked like a uh, quarterback and a, and a wide receiver. Woo. And that makes it a 24-point lead for the Golden Eagles. Rebound by Domino again. Travis Best pushes the ball up, has the ball slapped away by Kramer, and Atwood Curry is called for the push. Again, for the younger players watching the game, Ty, that was an excellent pass by Travis Best. Most players in a situation like that would have gone for a regular pass, whereas that was a nice bounce pass. It was just intercepted, but an excellent uh, display of athleticism by Travis Best. Again, the Golden Eagles staying in that 1-3-1 one, one zone. Worcester South having problems cracking that zone, either getting the ball inside or trying to get the outside shot. And there's Corey Clark with the outside shot. Oh, he was shot. pushed. Oh, he was pushed. We're not going to call it, though. Uh, Maybe these referees have night vision. Maybe that's what it is, Ty. They're letting a lot of things go. I don't know if they're trying to keep this game close or what they're trying to do. Yeah, Coach Kramer wants to talk to him, but the 5-12 here in the third period. It's the Golden Eagles of Central 60 and the Colonials of Worcester South 36. You can Co see Coach Burns is uh, very upset with the officiating side. He was just talking to the official. Uh, well, he has a, a right to be upset just on this last play where Best loses the ball out of bounds. He was actually pushed. Shot of Coach Burns, along with one of his former ball players sitting next to him, Wilfred Champ Godbolt, former Tech High player, now playing semi-pro ball down in South America. Champ Godbolt, one of the best in this area. Oh, nice! <laughs> the ball actually hits the back of the <laughs> yeah, backboard. Should have been out of bounds. Absolutely. Norman Domino takes it up. Rebound by Perry, and he takes up a lane for this. Nice throw the ball from number 12, Kevin Hill. You're right on that side. That did hit the back, and it should have been out of bounds, and I'm surprised they didn't call that. That's Kevin Hill's third personal foul. That'll send Atwood Perry to the line to shoot. Perry, 75% free throw shooter from the stripe. Has a nice release. A little short with that one. Rebound by Corey Clark. Yeah, again, you can see he cut it off a little bit in the foul through. Almost stolen by Atwood Perry. Turner pushes it in. Turner takes it up from outside. Three-pointer good. That was a Hail Mary. Those are the first points of the half for Wilson South with 4.45 remaining in the third period. Turner takes another three-pointer up. Rebound nice. by Kosalka. Nice strong rebound there by Eric Kosalka. Not a lot of points offensively for, from Kosalka, but doing a strong job on the boards as we watch oh. the 
Travis Best goes baseline, stops Hobbs and makes it. What a beautiful play. That time they went to his, they went to his left-hand side. Travis dribbled it behind the back and said, come on on me, and he went up and scored. What a nice play by Travis. You know, you can see it in the eyes of the Worcester ball players, with the exception of maybe Sam, Sam Johnson. The Worcester ball players are wide-eyed. They say, what is happening to us they're, here this evening? They're intimidated, Ty. There's no question about it. I agree. They're, they're, right. they're, they're in a state of confusion right now. They're in a state of flux. They're not sure. They're not executing. And now into the central lineup, number 23, Kevin Berg. And look at Jeff Kramer right there, Ty. I mean, you can say he's exhausted. I mean, he, they've got to put out 100%. It's not working for him. That's, that's unfortunate. Coach Burns is going at least four deep into his bench. And I think Coach Kramer is only going maybe one or two deep at the most. And that's going to show in the fourth period. Norman Domino gets a good pass. And he's fouled on the floor by number four, Scott Finner. That's Finner's second, I believe. And again, that 38% shooting from the floor is going to continue to go down because, as you saw that last time down the floor, they're taking shots, they're off balance, and they're just not able to execute properly. I think it would be surprised they come away with a 35% shooting night. Right now, Coach Burns only has two starters who make that three starters on the floor, and Robinson, Best, and Kozulka. Domino, the six man into the ball game, and even Kevin Burke now with some quality time with a, a rainbow shot. Right down Comes up right. way short. Finner working on Domino. Finner pushes the ball down. Out to Trimmer. He'll shoot the three pointer from there, but Domino over quickly to cover up. A little off balance shot that time by number 21, Sam Again. Johnson. Corey Clark gets a rebound, he can't hit. And again, poor shot selection time. There, every shot that they've taken, there's that one shot where it's a smooth follow through. Everything's off balance, over the head, throw it up, hope it goes in, and you know that's not the way you win ball games. Worcester South totally out of sync in their offense this evening, simply because of the defense of Golden Eagles of Central High School. Absolutely. Spinner working on Burke. Good ball movement that time over to Kramer. He tries a three-pointer. Eric Kozalka with another big rebound. Strong bound. Eric's getting great rebounding positioning. Best takes it up off the back of the rim. No good. Rebound by Finner for Worcester. The key to re good rebounding is position, and Eric Kosalka is really establishing position. Oh, Kosalka actually went to sleep that time. Didn't establish it that time, though. Kosalka watching the ball, not watching the defensive people, yeah. or the offensive people, excuse me. He was focusing on the man with the ball, not the man without. Good play by Kevin Burke that time, just to stop the ball from going out of bounds. Off the best. Best takes it inside to Burke. Burke lays it up, and Burke draws the foul. Nice look inside by Travis that time, Ty. Matter of fact, Kevin was surprised that he, he was able to get that ball to him that quickly. But a nice, nice look inside by Travis Best. Now, with two minutes and 45 seconds, Ty, in this type of lead, why do you think Coach is leaving uh, Travis in the game rather than giving him a rest of that fourth period? Just leaving him with these other subs well, to try to give him a little stability out there? Just that alone, uh, his presence on the floor uh, to settle things down, to control that offense, that, that's his job on this offense. You know, uh, yes, he scores, he scores a bundle of points, but his main factor is that glue that, that he gives to the rest of this team. Norman Domino applying a little full court pressure of his own. Yeah, Worcester South getting pushed, Trimmer takes it up from three points. Off the front of the rim, rebound by Best. Another thing I noticed that after this play, uh, nice pass, nice feed by Travis. Oh, you can't draw it any better than that in a textbook. Oh, no, absolutely not. As I was saying, one of the things that Kramer's going to take those long outside shots, he's got to get some rebounders in there. Good move that time by Johnson, showing his good leap leaping ability. Look at Travis, they're all over him, and look at they comes away out of that pass. Todd Robinson pushing the ball down the left side of the floor, has Kevin Burke in the corner. Burke with a high arcing shot, no good, rebound by Domino. He takes it up off the glass. No, oh, yes. nice shot, nice turnaround jump by Norman Domino. That makes it 69-43 to Golden Eagles of Central High with 149 remaining here in the third period. Cross court pass to Johnson. Johnson has been all of the offense for Worcester South, and he can't connect on a long jump shot. Best pushing the ball back down the floor. He takes oh. it up left-handed. What a now, what a move. That time he extended that ball its full length of his arm. Good move by Finner for Worcester South that time, getting the ball back down the floor quickly. But just as fast, Travis Best pushes the ball down the floor between two Worcester South ball players, and Johnson's called for the blocking foul. 
I mean, that move to the hoop by Travis Best was incredible, Ty. He had his arm at the full extent that he could possibly go. He waited for the movement coming around and just went right up to the hoop and scored. What a move. Now into the ball game number 10, Mike Anderson, replacing number 21, Todd Robinson. Also getting ready to come back into the ball game for the Golden Eagles of Central High School, number 20, Atwood Perry. And finally, we have a substitution for Worcester South. Ernest Asnon. Travis Best going to the line. Shooting one and one. Best a 72% free throw shooter. Here we get to see a good shot in the sophomore from Central. Really, one of the key factors in this evening's game the quality time that Coach Burns has gotten out of his bench this evening. There's no question about it. The subs have really done well. And they haven't they haven't missed a beat in terms of their swarming defense nor their potent offense. As Best hits two free throws. That makes it 73-45 with 120 remaining here in the third period. Well, you said in the first period, Ty, this was going to go into the 80s at the pace that they were at. They're certainly, at this point, they're probably going to be in the 90s central this evening. That's no question about that. This has been a fast-paced game, much to the dislike of Coach Jerry Krimmer from Worcester South, however. No question. Oh, wide open underneath. Uh, the wingman that time for Springfield didn't get back, and they got a little easy bunny. Long pass to Perry. Another Good easy. catch. And Whoa. Oh, Atwood oh, Perry. Oh, oh, oh. Unbelievable. What a great move by Atwood. He actually lost control of the ball. He got it hung up on his leg. Stolen by Beth. Well, and Worcester South gets the ball back. Good move that time by number 21, Sam Johnson. And he gets the ball blocked by Kozalka. And he finally controlled by Atwood Perry. And Perry loses the ball to Finner. Finner takes it up. Rebound by Kozalka. Kozalka has the ball slapped away. And it's either on Johnson or Finner. It's on Finner. That's his third. Well, they're going to get into foul trouble. And this is the last thing that Coach Kramer wants to be in. It's foul trouble. We, we still have 40 minutes to go in this third period, Ty. 40 and seconds, that is. I mean, yeah, 40 minutes. It's going to be a long third period. And they don't have the depth in that bench that's central that. So this could be a, a serious problem for Coach Kramer here. You know, as I, as I look at the Worcester South ball players, they're all leaning over, holding on to their shorts, being over, trying to get that last breath of air while these free throws are being shot by Kozolka. Finner, his eyes look almost sucking in his head. He's been on the floor the whole time this evening. Same thing with Clark and Johnson. But you look, but you look at the central players, and they're just like, you know, they just walked out onto the court. Whereas Worcester South is definitely their second win. As Kazuka hits two free throws, and that makes it a 30-point central lead, 77 to 47, with 35 seconds remaining here in the third period. Turner takes it up, no good. Rebound by Asha. He takes it up, no good. Body controlled by Kevin Burke. Burke quickly up to best. And Beth slows things down. 30-point lead, I wonder why. <laughs> but they don't know the term slow, Ty. They know full tilt, and that's it. And Coach Burns is going to turn this into a half-court game as Beth takes it up against Finner. No good. Rebound now by number 20, Corey Clark. And Clark tries to push the ball down the floor for Worcester South. He throws up a hope and a prayer. Oh, I, the soccer was nailed by and Scott I, Finner. And that's at the end of three periods. It's a 30-point central lead, 77 to 47. Well, you know, somebody said to me before the game, how do you look at this game? And after the way I saw them play against Long Meadow, who was similar size to, uh, if not a little bit bigger than Worcester South, they made a comment to somebody before the game, I think it's going to be a blowout. And uh, I'll tell you, it's certainly proving to be that right now with up with a 30-point lead with only eight minutes to go. Final period of action here. Coach Kramer came into the game saying that he was the underdog, and Central has proven just that, although they are wearing their, their, their road jerseys. Worcester got to wear the home team white because they were just closer here to Worcester Polytech. Let's talk about that other game that's going on right now at the Boston Garden, the Cambridge Latin, and the, uh, the Durfee game. Uh, that looks like it's going to be a good game, and uh, at this point, I don't think there's any way that uh, Worcester South, as unfortunate as it may seem, I don't think there's any way Worcester South is going to get back in this game tag. So they go to the Worcester Centrum on Saturday night against the winner of the Durfee Cambridge Latin game. That's going to be an excellent ball game. Well, I hope the fans can hear what we're saying because the, the noise level in here has just increased by about 10 decibels. Yeah, we can see the, the uh, Central fans have gone over to uh, talk to the, the Worcester South fans. 
all good-hearted high school basketball fun. Absolutely. You can feel the electricity in the air. It feels great. Todd Robinson into the ball game now. Off to Kevin Burke. Kevin Burke throws up an air ball. Rebound that time by Kozoka. And Kozoka stepped out of bounds. Good hustle by Kozoka. Trying to bounce the ball. Off the ball, the ball player. Eric Vassalk, like you said, he's, he's a silent man. He's doing a super job. Johnson pushed the ball up the floor. Almost blocked by Best. Good rebound that time by number 12, Kevin Hill. And Worcester knocks the ball out of bounds. I believe that time it was number 20, Corey Clark. Boy, they're not, they're not getting any, they're, they're not getting any rolls at all. Matter of fact, they might lucky, be lucky to have a 35% shooting average at this point, Ty, coming in with a 38%. Springfield has control of the boards at both ends of the floor. Central being very, very patient now. In fact, holding the ball out as long as Worcester South sits back in the zone. Central's going to keep the ball out and just play catch. Box in their favor. Ball inside to Perry. Perry takes it up off the back of the rim. And Todd Robinson called for a holding foul. Yeah, you can see Coach Burns so just slow down. You know, we've only got seven minutes and 12 seconds to go, and uh, we're just going to keep this commanding lead. I don't think there's any question that the Golden Eagles of Central are going to be in that state's final. We, boy, wish them the best of luck. Corey Clark takes it up and good. Ball almost thrown away. And, yes, thrown away that time by Fazalka. Got the end ball to bounce the best. Best being covered that time by number 20, Corey Clark. Well, here comes a big man into the game. <laughs> Looks like a tackle on their football team. Sean Deegan. Number 33, Sean Deegan entering the Worcester South lineup. He's a real wide body. <laughs> you got that right. The 747. Let's hope he doesn't take off. Spinner from outside for three. Rebound by Domino. Long pass down to Atwood Perry. Perry takes it up. And he actually got fouled. Oh, he and he did. missed the layup. Off to Sam Johnson against Best. And Best just lets him go to the roof. Yeah. You know, people say, why did Travis let him? Travis has got three fouls. Pass inside. Oh. Ball stolen almost. Controlled by Perry. He takes it up and it's short. Norman Domino goes high off oh, the glass. Oh, by oh. Norman. Whoa. Norman, Norman, Domino. Oh, again, the domino effect. He leaves people in his wake. Spinner in the corner, passes off to Johnson. Finally controlled by Clark. Clark takes it up, and he cans one. Best controlling for Central. Working on two, three. <laughs> Worcester South ball players, and he's by the whole team. Oh, my God. And he takes it up and good. That time they triple team him, Ty, and, and he said, all right, just stand out there and I'll just dribble around you. Worcester's so, South saying, what do we have to do to stop Travis Best? It's almost like you see when they, they put up those cones and the car goes around in those commercials. That's what Travis is doing that time. Johnson from outside for three. Rebound by Best. Best pushes the ball right back and has the ball stripped away, and he's fouled by Johnson. I'm surprised they didn't call that charge after what they've been calling tonight. Best will go to the line and shoot, one and one. Well, five minutes and 44 seconds. We're looking at the uh, state finalists right here in the Golden Eagles tie. There's no question in my mind at this point. For the second time in three years, Coach Howie Burns' team will make that trip to the Worcester Central to play the winner of the Cambridge Ringe and Latin and Durfee. Last time they made that trip, they played Cambridge Ringe and Latin triple overtime. What a great game that was. Well, I'm sure that Central Golden Eagles are going to represent the western part of the state I've said this a few times this year already. This team is pretty much in the same mold as that state championship team of 86, being everybody basically about the same height. Quick ball players all can jump, all play well on offense and defense as Best hits the second of two free throws. And that player you just saw on your screen is the catalyst. And he's, like you said, he's the glue. He's the glue that keeps this player together. Uh, Central still extending that 1-3-1 one, one, as Turner takes it in and lays it up off the glass. Central being smart not to draw any fouls as Best works on one-on-one. -on -one. He was fouled, of course, but they didn't call it. Best working on Turner. He takes oh! it. And it's good. What a move by Travis. He's got such good ball control in his hands. The flick of the wrist. Good wrist movement. Sean Deegan called for his first personal foul. As... Kevin Burke is back into the Golden Eagle lineup, replacing Atwood Perry. 
Travis is showing Central Massachusetts what the best is all about. A lesson in basketball. You see that 30-point lead that Central has right now. They're going to be in the 90s. What was their highest scoring game this year? Ty? I believe it was 116 against Putnam. <laughs> I've, they've practiced it for you, Mark, three times this year. Only team for Western Mass to, to do that this year, I believe. Well, there's a possibility they could at the century mark to here tonight. And what a better place to do it in the state semifinals. Well, if they keep pushing the ball down the floor at the pace that they're doing it right now, they will crack 100. But I'm sure Coach Burns will just try to keep it under, just, just to keep it respectable. As Best misses his own free throw and runs it down himself. Something that Worcester South didn't need. Kevin Burke in the corner looking inside. Central being very patient now. As long as Worcester South is going to sit back in that zone, Coach Burns is going to hold the ball out front. Yeah, they got to come out on him. You know, hold the ball all night. They're going to come out and play that tough man to man and start to deny. Central will go right to the basket. Central's quickness definitely the key factor tonight. Oh, there's absolutely no question about that. Worcester South has just not been able to keep up with them. And they haven't been able to shoot that defense. It just caused them to take all sorts of wild shots, as the percentage shows. As Robinson drives it in, feeds it off to Domino. Domino takes it up, and he rolls it off the rim. No good. Oh, oh look my pass. And he got hit in the top of the head Absolutely. off the offensive rebound and tap in. Did you see how high he has, was? I mean, he caught that ball in the air and was still able to control and keep right up and go into it. Great play by Travis Best. Johnson takes it up, and he fires it a two-pointer. Johnson, the bright spot on the Worcester South offense and defense this evening. Absolutely. Sam Johnson, he's been about the only bright spot, unfortunately, for the Worcester South team this evening. Again, I, I'm surprised you're seeing they're sagging back at that zone defense. Something that Coach Burns very upset about. He's trying to get people positioned in the right spot, and Central turns the ball over. But again, they still have that 30-point lead. With 4.05 remaining here in the game. It's 87-57, the Golden Eagles of Central High School. Again, Johnson takes it up into the paint. He throws up the leaner, and it's in and good. Travis Burst working against the hole with the South team. That's Look a foul. That. He pushed. Todd Robinson drives baseline. Whoa! Big and he has stuff. it rejected. Erased. Windex, so to speak, <laughs> by Corey Clark. I like Corey Clark. He's got his, he's got his initials uh, engraved in the back of his head. I think that's pretty cool. Now into the central lineup, number 10, Mike Anderson, replacing Todd Robinson. Coach Burns getting his ball handlers into the ball game because he had, I know he's going to try to keep the ball out with 3.35 remaining in the game. Best goes for three, and he's short, and Deegan with the rebound. Almost stolen by Anderson. It yes, it is. Up to Kevin Burke. Kevin Burke takes it up, and he throws it up. And he oh, oh, what a oh. beautiful play by Kevin Burke. He Kevin wasn't intimidated by Sean Deegan. Kevin Burke coming off the bench this evening. Got quality time in the long medal game, and he deserves some playing time as Norman Domino. Oh, make that Kevin Burke call for the blocking call. I thought yeah, Domino they're... might have stripped the ball away and got a piece of the arm. What a nice play by Kevin Burke. He did a nice job following his shot up. And again, Sean Deegan was a big boy, a wide body, as you say, and he wasn't intimidating Kevin Burke. Now into the Worcester South lineup. Number three, Jeffrey Sylvester. And also into the Golden Eagle lineup, number 20, Atwood Perry, and Perry replaces Eric Kazucker, who gets a nice hand as right. he comes out of the ball game with 3-14, and the Golden Eagles up by 30 points. Deegan with the rebound. Whoa, he touched the rim. And that was Sam Johnson showing that leaping ability. You can see why he can high jump 6-8 at, uh, at being only 6 foot 2. I mean, he, he, he almost high jumped the rim that time. Oh, they're going to call blocking foul on him that time. I'll tell you, Eric Kosaka got a great hand when he went out rightfully so. Although Eric didn't have a lot of points tonight, Ty, he really controlled both ends of that floor off the, off the uh, board. Did a well, great in, job. In board. the first half alone, Eric Kosaka had seven rebounds. He must have added another four or five here in the second half. And he did a nice job making the looks to his, to his boards. And, and their play of the players has just been incredible this evening. Coach Jerry Freeman felt that his team really had to box out well this evening, even to be close in this ballgame, is something that they did not do. They just allowed Central to control the offensive and defensive boards this evening. Yeah, when we were 
last play, I was looking over at the bench and Coach Kramer had his hands behind him. His hands, his head in his hands. And you could tell he was a very dejected coach. Uh, there was no execution tonight. I don't think he anticipated. Maybe he thought about Central's quickness, but I don't think they could execute. He didn't think they could execute as well as they did tonight. Uh, that swarming defense just was all over. Uh, he thought that he had to protect the ball. That's something that Central really doesn't allow teams to do very well because of that full court pressure. Again, the fans have been one of the prime factors in this ball game. They got into the game very early, and they took the Worcester team and, and the Worcester fans right out of the ball game. I think it's a credit to all the fans from Central and from Springfield to come down and make this 45-minute trip to support their team. And that's, that's what high school basketball is all about, Titus. It's nice to see that they could do it. Travis Smith best missed the front end of the one and one as Worcester South almost loses the ball to Deegan Controls off the critter into Johnson. Johnson with a nice move, no good. And Kevin Burke is called for a hold. And that'll send Johnson to the line. It's unbelievable, Ty, when they go down the, down the court and just see those the central bodies are just flying everywhere. I mean, there's, it's, a, it's just def, definitely a, just an exercise in fluidity and motion. It's, it's nice to watch. Well, like because, because Central uses people off the bench, they can afford to give that 110% effort the whole time that they're on the floor, knowing that somebody on the bench can come in and take their place for a couple of minutes while they can come out and get that two or three minute rest. There's a Norman Domino. Domino with the rebound off the best, and best pushes the ball right back at Worcester South. Look at how quick he gets down and makes that step. Oh, oh they're calling oh, a charge. Kidding. Unbelievable. I'll tell you, Hippert has been doing it all night. Best knife, actually knife right through four Worcester ball players that time. Didn't touch anybody. If anything, he got fouled. There's no but question. Jerry Hippert, the referee from the Worcester area, obviously called the foul. <laughs> oh, man, what a great move by Travis. That time, like you said, he, he just weaved right between four players and went up strong, and I can't believe that call. I that, that's know. the old proverbial homer call. He, mu he must have a cranial infliction like mine from pulling his hair out from the rest of all the other opposing coaches. Yeah, but. Uh, Central changes up with the defense, now goes back to a 3-2 zone. As Finner drops the ball off inside to Deegan, and Deegan gets a little bunny layup. Good move that time by Finner Finner's on a penetration board. move, dropping the ball off to Deegan. Deegan's a big boy. Clock down to just a little over two minutes. Ball inside the Domino. Nice. Domino Ooh. scores. He likes that. Just a low down on the key. He takes that turning shot and goes up. It is a nice job with that. Domino flashes well into the paint, and Central has the ability to get the ball inside as Johnson takes it up, and he's fouled outside by Kevin Burke. Well, I didn't see that, neither did Kevin Burke. He's amazed by that. You know, it's something Central doesn't need to do is stop the clock. Really? With 157 remaining. And it's the Golden Eagles, 91. Worcester South, 64. Well, Central came down, noted for their speed, noted for their aggressiveness, noted for their potent offense, and boy, they have certainly carried that to fruition this evening. Well, both coaches beginning to get all of the substitutes into the ball game. Coach Kramer realizes that it's hopeless that with 154 and Central up 91-64. Coach Burns also bringing in now Nate Murray, num Murray, number 30, replacing Kevin Burke. Well, it's nice to see these coaches are getting all their players into the game, and it's a tribute to both coaches. I think uh, Coach Kramer obviously is thrown in the towel, and rightfully so. Look at that swarming, Steve. Up up to Mike Anderson, and nice. Mike Anderson lays it up and in. Travis Best could have easily pushed the ball up the floor himself, but, he's a but he gave it up and let, every, let someone else get into the scoring column this evening. Turner from outside, no good. Rebound by Deegan. Deegan takes it up, and Atwood Perry finally controls. Off to Mike Anderson. Whoa. And Anderson has the ball stripped away by Johnson. 93 to 64. I'll tell you, this is a, a blowout personified. Well, with 29 remaining, you think Simpson can crack the 100, more, 100 point mark as Best takes it up. No good. Rebound by Perry. He goes back into the paint, takes it up, and no good. Look at those rebounders. And good save by Best. Good fake. Good up fake. And he takes it up. No good. Nate Murray looking for his first basket of the day. Good, and right. he scores. Nice job by Nate Murray. I mean, they're just dominating the board every end of the court. 
That time they got five shots and the hoop tied. Good offensive move by Nate Murray. Get that offensive rebound and takes it up and off the glass. That's Chris Wheeler coming in now. Chris Wheeler going into the ball game. Travis and replacing Beth. number three, Travis Betts. They're the standing all, no question about it. And here's a good shot of the central crowd. Standing ovation for the person that certainly deserves it. The best any of these players in West in the Central Air are going to see in a long time. And Nate Murray converts one free throw. That makes it 96-64 to Golden Eagles at Central High School with 108 remaining. I think he's going to get Norman Domino out of there now. Get Kevin Burke back into the game. Well, there, there, there are no starters on the floor for Central right now. Benner takes it up, throws up a hope, and it's oh, good. Close your eye, open him up. Ball went in. Again, you can see, Ty, they, they just have absolutely no shot selection at all. You see as Central keeps the ball out into Corey White, back out to Anderson. Anderson looking to score, and he bites it home. Well, we can't that the entry mark. 66 to Golden Eagles. The fans are crying for one more hoop here, so Central can crack 100. They're going to go. Oh, nice steal. Steal by Chris Wheeler. Chris Wheeler Chris takes it down, and he's fouled. Ooh. Intentional foul. Two shots and possession. 25 seconds. I think they can do it, Ty. The fans are going wild behind us, and rightfully so. What a tribute to this team. What a representative we're sending to the state finals. Wheeler going to the line shoot two and then Central will get the ball back on the intentional foul. Now coming out of the ball game, Norman Domino. Great job by Norman Domino is usually coming up that bench tonight. Wheeler gets a chance to bring it up to 100 here with two free throws. Uh, and he can't convert the first. We don't want to leave it at 98. The important thing is Central will get the ball back here. That's 99 <laughs> and with 25 20. seconds left. And possession by the Golden Eagles of Central High School. I think intimidation was one of the main factors here this evening. There's no question about it. You can see, like you said earlier, that Wheeler one picks look. it up. No good. Rebound by Burke. Was fouled. And Burke was fouled at that time Kevin by Burke number 15, nailed. Robert Babbage. I'll tell you, nice job tonight by Kevin Burke. Burke banged his elbow a little hard like Padilla did earlier in the ball game today. That's another thing. We didn't see any of uh, Del Padilla in that fourth period of action, so let's hope that Goodell's going to be all right for the, uh, for the state finals. Well, Coach Burns really didn't need to bring it back into the ball game. That was a smart move, keeping him out and let him rest that elbow up. It's Goodell Padilla. Matter of fact, we see Goodell standing right now. Kevin Burke makes the 100. 66 as the fans let loose <laughs> and rightfully so. This is fantastic. Sour grapes over in the Worcester South side. This is great. This is what high school basketball is all about, Ty. It's nice to be a part of it. It's nice that Continental Cable Vision can bring the people back in Springfield this game. Referee, some of the fans are getting a little rowdy here. Beginning to press down on the court. Well, this, this place is going to go wild. These Central fans are going to go wild. What a nice time to break the century mark, Ty. The state semifinals. For the fourth time this year. Nate Murray in the lane too soon. Uh, we don't leave really it a mental mistake that time. Really didn't need to get into the lane. But they've done it. 35-point lead. Well, I said to somebody before the game, it's going to be a blowout. They've certainly done that tonight. Central should just let them shoot here, not stop the clock. Chris Wheeler causing a foul. Not very smart on his part. Chris wants to go to the paint. One more time. I think they want to try to get the ball back in and, and make it 102. I think so. Well, this is going to set up an interesting final. The Worcester Central on Saturday between Cambridge Ridge, Ridge Latin or Durfee and our Central Golden Eagles. And like I said. Central will certainly do Western Mass proud in the state finals, I'm sure. 
Again, for the second time in three years, making the trip to Worcester Central. <laughs> and with a team they've got with only one senior, Eric Osaka, we're going to see him probably back there. They're going to call, call it travel. Actually, he was held that time by Johnson trying to come out of the pack. Again, a little nervousness on Chris Wheeler's part. One of the JV ball players that Coach Burns has brought up along just to, to fill out the roster for the Golden Eagles. Don't foul. Let him shoot. Let him go. He throws it up. Johnson throws it up. Rebound by Burke. And Burke's called for a travel with five seconds remaining. Well, he's, <laughs> at least they've been consistent, consistent in their inconsistency tonight, guys, at these referees. Outstanding performance by the entire Central team. Everyone has contributed their own way. Good shot that time outside by number 15. That's Babbage. And that's it. The final score from Worcester Polytechnical Institute. The Golden Eagles of Central High School 100. The Colonials of Worcester South 67 in this semifinals. And they're on their way to the finals. Well, I don't, like I said, I don't think we could ask for a better representative from Western Massachusetts. I think the key tonight, there's no question about it, Ty, is that swarming defense, the potent offense, Travis Best controlling the game, both offensively and defensively, the second leading rebounder, and uh, a great team effort tonight by the Golden Eagles. And they've got a lot to be proud of. Hopefully we can find Coach Burns in all of this bedlam, and we'll get a few words from him and see how he feels about his trip back to the Centrum. And we'll hopefully we'll be back with this, that interview after these short messages. You see it, Central High advances to the state finals. Tyrone Sullivan back at Worcester Polytechnical Institute, 100 to 67, coach. You're going back to the state finals for the second time in two in three years. That's exciting. Very. Uh, you know, it, the fact that we got 100 points doesn't make me feel happy because we beat them by such a big score. But I felt that we had to play hard for 32 minutes today, regardless of the score, because we're going to have a very tough game on Saturday. And uh, the kids have got to be conditioned to be able to play hard for 32 minutes. So that's the why we played the way we did. Well, you came out with that famous press of yours, the, the zone press, and Worcester South felt a little intimidated. Yes, we got some turnovers early, but then they were getting the ball through the press. But the point is they were playing very, very fast. And at the end, they didn't pull it out. They just attacked the basket. So even if they scored, we got the ball back. And I feel that uh, if they play like that with us, we're going to score more than they are. Going to the state finals, who would you rather play, Durfee or Cambridge Ranger and Latin? I would rather play the team that we can beat. So up there, whoever we can beat, make them win tonight. We <laughs> Congratulations, Coach, and good luck in the state finals. Thanks. Standing also here with Travis Best. Travis, an excellent game, dominated the first half of play, showed him what it was all about, had an excellent game. Thanks. Um, you know, I just I wanted to be prepared out here, you know, I hurt my uh, ankle in practice, so uh, you know it, little, it negated a few things, you know, that I wanted to do. But uh, I, I just wanted to be prepared and come out and have a good game. That you did, and once again, good luck in the state finals against either Durfee or Cambridge Ranger Latin. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, final score 100 to 67, the Golden Eagles of Central High School here at Worcester Polytechnical Institute. Thanks a lot to Continental Cable Vision and Tom Forster and the rest of the crew. This is Tyrone Sullivan saying good night.
north or south. They're headed for the state finals, that's for sure. The Central Golden Eagles are on a mission to prove they are the best boys basketball team in Division I in Massachusetts. As of tonight, they have two-thirds of the state covered. They took the Western Mass title on Saturday, and tonight they obliterated Central Mass Worcester South. This was unbelievable the way they played tonight. The fans were central out in full force and looking for a quick start, and they will get it from Hidel Padilla. Strips the ball right there. Atwood Perry with a pass to Padilla for the slam. On their way, and the crowd loves it. Coming up, another steal for Travis Bess. He goes to Padilla for two more, plus the foul. Padilla with 16 on the night. He is really playing well right now, and the roll is on. Worcester South tries to hang in there. Sam Johnson for two of his team high. 25, but Central has Travis Best on the drive for two of his game high, 36. He is so good. Back down the other end, Johnson on the fast break as they try, try to stay close, but Best will just take over this game. First with a pass to Padilla for the easy bucket, and then a pretty drive for Travis. Who's the best? Boy, he's tough, and his brother loves it in the stands. He's going crazy. Good ball movement inside to Eric Kozalka, the senior. It's 50 to 36 Central at the half, and then they blow it open, believe it or not. Any hope for Worcester South is dashed right away. First best for three, and then best coming up on the drive as Central had a 30-point lead at the end of three, the final 100 to 67. Oh, yeah, turnovers in the first half, and we got a big lead, we just kept on to it the whole game. We wanted to go to the States real bad, and uh, we really wanted to be prepared hard in practice so uh, it paid off we've got a game come saturday and uh i think it's going to be Durfee, but it could be cambridge ridge and latin and uh, we're in the state championship game and uh, we've got a chance to win it again so that's what that's what we'd like to be able to do howie was right they'll play Durfee. they are undefeated at 24-0 they beat cambridge ridge and latin tonight in overtime at the team high for